In this video, we're going to go over the basics of the 3D Viewer module in LASX. If you have the license for 3D Viewer, you'll see this 3D button on the right side of your image window. So go ahead and click that. So it's a little bit like Navigator in that it will open a brand new window. So the first thing that happens when you open the 3D Viewer is it always defaults on this gray background. So the first thing I do is check this box for black. So your 3D Viewer license may be the basic version, in which case you might not have all of the features I'm going to go through right now. You can always demo the advanced version by loading the trial license. I'm just going to go over things very quickly and give you a quick overview I do also want to emphasize that this isn't a quantitative tool, it is mostly for visualization. And so all of these settings really depend on what you want to show. So starting with the left side here, we have three different modes. There's volume, rendering, maximum, and shadow. So under volume, we can either go with shaded, and we can also do depth coding, which will add a depth coded scale bar or scale to the image to show you how deep something is. You can also add different scales in terms of X, Y, Z, front to back, back to front. The mode that I like to work in is called maximum, but this is, you know, my personal preference. And then finally, there's shadow. Shadow has the ability to drag a light source in different areas. You might not be able to see it so well in this sample, but it does create a shadow effect. So let's just go back to volume. The next panel here are your settings for your two channels. You can play around with these to see which uh, settings are best for your sample. Then uh, intensity is pretty self-explanatory. It's brightness. The next set here are different kinds of appearance. There's two ways to reset your viewer. One is at the top here with this reset viewer. The other way is to hit this home button. Both do the same thing. I should note that to navigate around the 3D viewer, it's all through your mouse, very similar to Navigator. You can zoom in and zoom out with the mouse wheel. You can also pan by right clicking and dragging. The other thing you can do is rotate using the left click. All right, so draw a frame. Draws a frame around your sample. Axis scaling, scale bar, auto spin. It's kind of fun. So if you zoom in a little bit, any, any direction you choose to push your sample in, it'll keep spinning. Or the harder or the faster you drag across your sample, the faster it spins. And then similarly, if you only move it, nudge it a little bit, it spins slower. The other thing I like to do is motion. So motion will just do a slight toggling back and forth. Channels and overlay, it's self-explanatory. You can go to split the channels and have the channels and the overlay in separate windows or just the overlay. These are different orthogonal views of your sample. Down here are more ways to visualize. So this is sections. You can look at slices, stereo, clipping. So I've already actually checked the magenta channel. So the way that you do this is under clipping. I'm clipping in these planes, meaning that showing things in this plane here. Frame means whether or not I can see that clipping plane. And then channels. So if I want to see both, then I have both of these checked. So it's actually the opposite of what you think. If I don't want to see the magenta channel in my planes, then I uncheck it. So now when I drag this up and down, I can hide or reveal the magenta channel. The last one is the most fun, I think, and the, probably one of the more popular items is the movie editor. So the movie editor is very simple and easy to use. I will create another video just on that. Now at the top, we have a couple of other options. Like I said, we have our reset viewer zoom setting to 100. Uh, your different channels you can uncheck here, very similar to Navigator. Auto range, I can reset. See my green channel is very dim. This is the same as the channels and overlay button. If I want just the 2D view, go back to my 2D viewer. 3D view, this is the same as those items on the left. So sections, orthogonal, slice views but I just prefer to be in the 3D viewer. If you wanted to compare two images, which is really helpful when looking at things like Thunder images, let's go ahead and do multiple viewer planes. So we click that, then we can link them and add. 
So now we have two, and let's say we want to put the raw image in this one. And this is my large volume computationally processed image. And zoom in. So you can basically do a side-by-side -side comparison of these two images. This is something that maybe you want to go back and look at the different rendering. Maybe maximum is slightly better because I feel like maximum is less blown out. You can still make out some of these details a little bit better. And the last button we have here is load image, which allows you to not only load the images from your current project, but also anywhere from your drive. So it's kind of like a image browser that you can go in and find other images to load in your 3D viewer.